Jules, we not done because we have more. Yeah. Great kids. France and Canada battle to a scoreless draw. Nothing to be concerned about, right, Jules? And I guess nobody told Deschamps that Marcus Thuram tends to play through the middle these days. So the Thuram one is interesting. Uh, for the game itself... He hasn't watched Serie A all season. No, so it's not that. It's, not. it's actually one of the leagues that he watches the most. Um, on the game, nil-nil. Mbappé was on the bench because he was kind of rested for 74 minutes. Not much happened. It was a good start from the French. Mbappé thought, was rested because he tired himself out with all those consecutive games. He uh, played at the I probably took a knock season. on his knee in the game against okay. uh, right, Luxembourg, right, right. maybe. Uh, but I thought Canada were good. They, they had a lot of energy, as you would expect from a Jesse Marsh team, but they played well. They hit the bar. Liam Miller was, had a really, really good game, I thought. So it was a good performance, I thought, overall from Canada. From the French, maybe not so much. Griezmann, who plays higher up the pitch, uh, in the last two games, a bit disappointing overall. Saliba started and played, yeah, 62 minutes with Upamecano and 28 with Konate. Did well. I, I don't think, unfortunately, it'd be enough for him to get a starting place for the first game of the year against Austria, but at least he was the best player on the pitch. So well done to him. Deschamps was not happy, but didn't seem too concerned either. Again, it's one of those friendlies. When is he ever concerned? He's won a World Cup. I know, but he didn't look happy, to be fair, on the bench because there was a lack of urgency from the team. I don't know. There was a lot of things. Golo Conte? Really like. I, mean, I thought he was really I was good like, again. who is that guy? He looks like N'Golo Conte, just a little. So good. And for Turam, it's interesting, I said, because of course he knows he plays central, but that would mean Mbappe would have to play left and not defend, which I think would unbalance the team defensively. We saw yesterday defensively the, like a flat 4-4-2 out of possession with Griezmann coming up next to Giroud, who replaced Mbappé, and Thuram being very disciplined defensively on the left-hand side. And I think Mbappé would play centrally at the start, certainly out of possession. With the ball, he can do whatever he wants, and Thuram is smart enough to adjust his runs right. and his positioning to where Kylian is. But defensively, you need Thuram on the left to defend because Mbappé would not do that. And that's simple as that. Davide Fratesi scores the only goal, and what a goal, by the way, as Italy beat Bosnia also on... Um, on Saturday night. Gab, what did you make of the defending champions? Meh. Um, I agree. Look, I think defensively, we actually, Italy actually have a lot of really good players. Uh, even without Scalvini, I think really have a very good goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, who made big saves in that who game. Who made some big saves. The midfield, if everybody's fit, you know, some combination of Jorginho, Barella, Pellegrini, maybe Fratesi, dignified. My fear is up front where... We want, we've got Scamacca, who, if it's the Anfield Scamacca, sure. If it's Mr. Inconsisto, Tattoo de Mess, Scamacca, yeah. not so good. And we have Federico Chiesa, who's made of paper. Again, if he shows up and he happens to be fit for these seven games, mm -hmm. great. So there's just no no depth there. But I thought they played they played reasonable well against Bosnia. I mean, Di Marco made a couple of big mistakes, but that's fine. Better he makes the mistakes now than during the tournament. Kylian Mbappe says that winning the Euros is tougher than uh, winning the World Cup. Jules, did he elaborate on his thought process or was he just trolling South America? No, I mean, this is the old debate, obviously, that I think is completely pointless to have anyway. So stupid. I know, so stupid. It's, hard, it's as hard to win one or the other. It depends a lot on the draw, which side of the draw you are, all of that anyway. Yeah, I think his point was like, because European teams know each other so well and the, tactically it's quite a similar mindset, it's harder than when you go and play. He called them exotic, exotic teams, exotic teams. Sorry, at the World Cup, which the Argentina, is Argentina, real exotic. Which is not really the term no. that you, you, you should no. use. Uh, as you can imagine, on the ESPN FC <laughs> show, the European ones defended Kylian Mbappe and Europe, like Neda Manua and Frank Leboeuf. The South Americans and Central Americans and North American ones went like, "This is outrageous!" You know, and Stephen Nichol it's defended Europe silly. as well. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly now that the Euros has been extended to 24 teams, you'll have some weak teams in the group stage like you might have at the World Cup as well. So I don't think there's a debate anymore. Brazil beat Mexico 3-2 with a peach of a late, late goal from none other than Hendrik. Yeah. Jules, what did you learn ahead of the Copa America? Well, at first, I thought that was a really good game. Brazil with a kind of B team to start with. Vinicius was on the bench, uh, for example. Bruno Guimarães as well. And Paqueta too, they, they came on uh, when Mexico came back into the game because Brazil scored early with Andres Pereira, then Martinelli early in the second half as well. I thought Mexico got obviously battered uh, four days before by Uruguay 
mm. or five days before by a, a wonderful Uruguay performance, Darwin Nunez with a hat trick. I thought Mexico showed up far more and better uh, in a game where they fought hard back. It, it could have gone, they could have scored more goals, both of those teams. And I thought it was really good. And when Mexico equalized in the 93rd minute, they thought, okay, at least we can go from here. The ste- they were so mad everywhere on the bench, everything. And then. Hendrik and Vinicius crossed Great by pass Vinicius. Vinicius. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Hendrik put the uh, the AC back on in the stadium, um, and I think I think this boys really well. I think Brazil would be very strong in the Copa America, and for Mexico, at least this was a reaction after the drubbing against yeah. Uruguay. 